honor to have uh, Dr. Amin Masawi speak uh, this morning. Uh, Amin is now a um, uh, postdoctoral research scholar in my group. Uh, he received his master's degree from, and I'll have to correct my pronunciation here, University of Manastir uh, in Tunisia. Yes. Uh, this was in 2012, then uh, had a couple of master's degrees, which is typical of the uh, European system and received his PhD in 2021 uh, from, it was actually a co-tutel. Uh, it was a dual PhD from uh, the Otto von, Ger uh, von Gerke University in Magdeburg, Germany under Rolf Stenarius. Uh, but I think with his main um, uh, connection being with uh, Sorbonne in Paris under Emmanuel Lacaz. Um, he's done a lot of work in defects, and you can see the title here. The other thing I'll mention is that um, uh, the work is being done in a uh, microgravity environment, and there are, for these sorts of things, there are two ways of doing it. One, uh, aboard the International Space Station, and the other, using a parabolic aircraft, better known as the Vomit Comet. And uh, Amin tells me that he has done 279 periods of uh, simulated micro or zero gravity. And uh, uh, he's a whole lot braver than I am. I don't know if he had a chance to get out to Cedar Point this summer and do some of the roller coasters, you know, given this experience. But in any event, uh, Amin's going to tell us about uh, his work done, not in my group, but uh, before coming here at uh, in Germany and also at the uh, Sorbonne. Okay, Amin, go ahead. Yes, thank you, Chuck, for the nice introduction. So today I'll be talking about the dynamics of topological defects in smectic li liquid crystal freely suspending films and freely floating bubbles. So let me start first by introducing topological defects. So to topological defects are regimes where the order that defines the system is lost and can't be defined anymore. And they occur in different kinds of physical systems such as soft matter, quantum system, superfluid, and even cosmology. So here I show examples of topological defects that exist. For example, dislocation in the crystal where the order that defined the crystal is not defined anymore in this region here. And I show a second example of disclination in crystal where the rotational order is lost and can be defined in this area. I show a third example of grain boundary in graphene where the order parameter that defined the graphene structure is lost across those red area. So topological defects play an important role in determining the properties of real materials, such as electronic properties of semiconductor and mechanical properties of metal-like steel. So let's take the cosmology defects as an example. So in cosmology, topological defects are formed at the phase transition in the early universe. And their dynamics is important and play a crucial effect in the evolution of the universe. So here I show an example of a monopole, which is a point-like defect, and antimonopole. You can see that the order is lost at the defect core at the center here. So cosmological topological defects have not been yet detected because they are extremely high energetic, but their analog can be studied on Earth in different contexts, such as texture and monopole in liquid crystal materials. But first, what are liquid crystals? So liquid crystal is a state of matter that combine both properties of those of crystal material and solid materials. And there are many phases in the crystal, liquid crystal uh, state of matter. Like here, I show three phases the called the smectic C, the smectic A, and the nematic. And then we go through two of them. Let's start by the pneumatic phase. So here again, the molecules in the pneumatic phase are organized in this way, where their local average orientation is given by the end director that you can see here. So the first type of, of topological defects in the pneumatic phase is disclinations. They are singular line around which the director N is lost and cannot be defined anymore. Here I show the molecule organization 
around a singular line, uh, you can see 3D simulation, the center is a singular line. So in the equivalent XY plan, different configuration can exist and the, the singular line are considered as two dimensional defects. Here I show four examples and they are characterized by a topological charge S, which is equal to the number of full rotation of the end director around the defect core shown by the black dot here. So here I show the example of a plus one defect, a minus one, a minus one half, and the plus one half. So when pneumatic are encapsulated between two plates that we call limit liquid crystal cell, this is what we can observe under optical microscope between cross polarizers. One can recognize here the, to the, the topological charge plus one and the topological minus one. So studying the interaction and the dynamics of plus and minus one defects for this example is not easy to interpret because of the interaction of the disclinations, uh, this disclination with the, uh, the cell uh, surfaces. So if we go now to the smectic C phase, the molecules are organized in this way and they are characterized by a layer structure as you can see it here. And similar to the pneumatic phase, they are described, their orientation is described by a C director, which is the projection of the N director in the XY plan. So here, this C director has an angle theta with respect to the X axis. And here, the C director is a polar vector. So for parallel and equivalent layers, the smectic material can be treated as 2D polar pneumatics. So equivalent disclination can exist, but only with integer defects because of the polarity of the C director. For example, here I show the plus one and the minus one defects. One of the big advantage of the smectic materials are that they are able to form freely suspending film. So here I show what a freely suspending film looks like. So this is a metallic frame and the film, smectic film is formed here which is linked to the metallic frame by a thick region here called the meniscus. So those geometry of the smectic membrane can be considered as quasi two dimensional geometry because they have large aspect ratio of the width over the thickness. And another advantage, they are also uh, free of boundary. That there is no interaction with the boundaries like this metallic cell here, the interface with the air are free. So there is no interaction. So I want to show you a quick video of how to create a freely suspending film. So this is a razor blade. And here we have the metallic frame and the liquid crystal is in between. And you can see a hole under the razor blade. And we can stretch the razor blade to form the freely suspending film, as you can see it here, from the reflection. So here we are interested on the dynamics of plus and minus one defects in freely suspending film. So I go to the second type of dislocation of topological defects, which is dislocations that are formed in the smectic materials. So they are similar to dislocation line that are formed in crystal. I show again this picture here. And in freely suspending film, dislocation lines are formed around island that are thicker region than the background film. So I will explain in details island later. So here we are interested on the dynamics of islands in another type of smectic membranes, which are freely floating bubbles in the absence of the meniscus, as you can see it here. And you can see by those dark spots are here that present the islands. So here, those freely floating bubble has no boundary and we are interested on the dynamic of island surrounded by dislocations. So the objective here is to study the dynamics of plus and minus one defects in freely suspended rectangular film and studying the dynamics of islands surrounded by dislocation in freely floating bubble in microgravity condition by mean of high speed camera. So just before I start, I just want to show you a quick video of how we test the equipment uh, during the parabolic flights campaign. 
So here is during microgravity, you can see that everything is free for Okay, so let's start by the dynamics of topological defects in freely spanning field. So this is how a freely spanning film between cross polarizers and using a full wave plate inserted at 45 degrees under uh, mic optical microscope looks like. So here, the different colors arise from different orientation of the C director. And using this code color, we can determine the C director orientation locally. For example, for the yellow color, we have the C director pointing in this direction. For the, point, for the pink is in this direction and for the blue it's in this direction. And this is uh, what a pair of plus and minus one defects looks like in the same condition of cross polarizers and using wave plate. So we can use the same code color to identify the plus one defect here and the minus one defect here. Just to show you how we create those pairs. So if we consider this homogeneous film, here the arrows indicates the C director. So when we touch the film with the glass fiber, it performs a tangential inquiring at the interface between the fiber and the film, which will automatically create plus one a minus one defect here to compensate the distortion. So we have the plus and minus one defect here. And when we remove the fiber, the plus and minus one defect remains in the film. So this technique allowed to create isolated and well-controlled plus and minus one defect in an easy way. So I showed you that the C director can have different orientation. This means that the symmetric material, materials are elastic material. So the C director distortion is associated with two type of distortion, which are the splay, as you can see here, and the bend in the two dimension. So those two type of distortion are associated with two elastic constant, Ks and Kb of the order of 10 piconewton, and they are approximated to be equal to one elastic constant given by K. So in the presence of the distortion, there is an elastic energy, and also the symmetric materials, the freely spanning fins are characterized by a hydrodynamic flow that I will talk about it later. So let's start by introducing the total energy of the system in the one constant approximation and in the absence of the material flow. So this is the equation. Please note here that theta is the angle between the C director and the X axis and K is the one elastic constant. So the local minimum of the energy corresponds to a defect of charge S. And this is, equation, this is the equation. If we sketch it for the case of S equal to plus one, this, is, this gives the plus one defect. So theta zero here in the equation is the defect phase, which equals to, plus, to pi half in this case. So for the case of topological charge S1 and S1, S2 pair, this equation is written as a combination of two isolated defects. And here I sketch it for the case of a defect one at x, y, x1, y1, and x2, y2 at separation distance defined as r12. So please note that this equation only describes that defects with parallel C director along the pair connecting line. It considers only defects that are aligned in this case. So let's take a look now on the elastic energy preference thickness. So it's written in this way. And for the, for the case of plus and minus one defect, S1 equal to minus S2. So this first term is zero and the only second term remains. So the elastic for, force preference thickness is given as the following. R12, again, here is the separation distance between the defects. So if we consider S1 equal to S2, the defects will repel each other. This is for like case of plus one and plus one defects, they will repel each other. And for the case of S1 equal to minus S2, 
two for the case, for example, the plus and minus one, they will attract each other. So there is a drag force on each defect, which is written as the following, where gamma one is the rotational viscosity, V is the velocity of the defect, and ER is the erection number. So the balance between the two forces, we can deduce the velocity and the second law. The first law is velocity says that the plus and the minus one defects should move with the same velocity. And the separation distance between the defects should follow the square root of time low, as you can see here. So the two defects are predicted to approach from each other on a straight path. As I said, the quasi-equilibrium configuration describes all defects that are aligned. The previous, <clears throat> the previous investigation showed that the annihilation of plus and minus one defect is not in agreement with the classical model. So the linear, the square root separation, oh, the separation distance R12 do not follow square root low, but it follows a linear decrease for, lar for large distance, then it follow a square root of time for short distance. It has been also shown that the plus and minus one defect do not move with the same velocity, but the, the positive defect move with the higher velocity than the negative one. And also it has been shown that the defect phase theta zero that I showed to you before plays an important role on the annihilation of the defects where they can have curved trajectory instead of the linear one predicted by the classical model. So here, the previous investigation showed that many questions arise about the validity of the classical model. So let's go back to our case of uh, plus and minus one in freely suspending film. So here I want to show you a quick video from the annihilation of the plus and minus one. This is the plus one, and this is the, the minus one. So they attract each other and they annihilate. So from the attraction, we can determine their trajectory and we can determine the velocity and we can check the classical model. So let's start how we determine the trajectory. So we fix the first position of the plus one and the minus one. Then we track their ascent position over time and we construct the trajectory. So we found that some defects follow a straight trajectory where the plus one and the minus one annihilate in straight trajectory, as you can see it here. But also we found that some defects have curved trajectory where the plus one and the minus one annihilate in a curved trajectory, which is not predicted by the classical model that considered all the defects are aligned and should annihilate on straight line. We also found that for both cases, there's the, there is an asymmetric velocity. The positive defect, the plus one, is always moving to the annihilation point faster than the negative one, which is not also predicted by the classical model that considered that both defects should move with the same velocity. So let's check the separation distance R12 over time for the straight trajectory. And we found that it follows the square root of time low in agreement with the classical model. For the case of curved trajectories, we measure the separation distance R12 over time. And you can see here, it deviate and do not follow the square root of time low. So the red line here is the square root of uh, time fit. So we defined here a new separation distance R12 measured across or along the defect path. So for example, and the plus one defect is here and the minus one defect is here, the new separation distance R12 prime is measured along the path of the defects. And in this case, we find the square root of time low. So the classical model fails to describe the curved trajectories. So before we move further, I just want to introduce a few parameters. So let's take again the case of straight trajectory and using the code color, I sketch the C director around the defects by the white arrows here. So if I define the mismatch angle as the variation of the C director or the angle along the pair connecting line. 
So for this case of strike trajectory, delta theta here is equal to zero because the C director remain parallel along the QR connecting line. If we take, we first we define this case by the matched pair. If we take now the curved trajectory defect and they do the same, I sketch the C director around the defect and they determine the mismatch angle delta theta, I find that it's for this case, for this example, it's 65 degrees. So with the mismatch between the C director near the plus one and near the minus one is about 65 degrees. So we define this case by a mismatched pair. Another parameter that I want to define here is this C director far from the defect that I call the C far here, which is the orientation of the director in the homogeneous part of far from the defect, which I determine a posteriori after the defect annihilation, as you can see for this example. So this C director or this parameter can play a crucial role during the annihilation process. So I define the misalignment angle, phi d, which is the angle between the C director far from the defect that I show by this arrow here and the separation vector between the plus and minus one defect. So phi d is this angle here. Okay, so let's take the matched defect. Here, the misalignment angle phi d is equal to minus three pi over two because this connecting line is perpendicular to this C far director field. So the misalignment parameter delta phi here is equal to zero. And I showed you before that the mismatch angle delta theta that defined the mismatch of the C director across the connecting line is zero. So for this case, both the misalignment angle and the mismatch angle are both equal to zero. So the defect do not need to rotate with respect to each other or with respect to this far C director field. That's why they have an aligned trajectory, which is in agreement with the classical model. So let's move now to the case of mismatch defect. So here you can see that the mismatch misalignment angle phi d is different to minus two pi, three pi over two pi over three, because the C director is not perpendicular anymore to the pair connecting line. For this case, the misalignment parameter delta phi is different to zero. And the misalignment angle is equal to 65. It's also different to zero. So both misalignment and mismatch angle are different to zero for this case of mismatched pairs. So before the annihilation, the C director at the position of the annihilation must be undistorted, which is fulfilled for delta theta equal to delta phi equal to zero. This means that for this case of defects, they need to rotate with respect to each other and with respect to the C far director field in order to reduce those two angles, which induce a curved trajectory. So the C, C far director field exerts a torque to rotate the defect pair. It's similar to or analog to uh, electric dipole in a homogeneous electric field that try to exert a torque on the electric dipole to align it along the director. So if I came back again to quasi-equilibrium situation that describe the defects by a combination of one defect. So this equation fails to describe the plus and minus one defect that are mismatched. But the new quasi-equilibrium configuration have been introduced recently that takes into account the mismatch angle that, that, that as you can see it here. So this model was based on the one constant approximation as I showed you before, where the elastic constant are approximated to be equal. But here, the C director field far from the defect was neglected. So this model predicts trajectories that are similar to the one that we found during our experiments. As you can see it here for different mismatch angle, they have different curved trajectories. So this model predicts that the mismatch angle should follow a minus two misalignment angle over time 
when the defects annihilate. So experimentally, we found a discrepancy because we found that the misalignment angle follow a minus one, a minus mismatch angle, which is in discrepancy with the classical model. So here, our first hypothesis is that equilibrium states are different from those predicted by the one constant approximation because in the new model, the Farsi director field was neglected. Or the second hypothesis is the experimental system does not develop through quasi-equilibrium states on the way to annihilation because of the consideration of the one constant approximation. So to sum up this section, we found that matched and aligned effect pairs follow the square root of time scaling, and the classical model is partially in agreement uh, in this case. For the case of mismatched and misaligned defect pairs, we found that classical models disagree with the experimental results. And we found that the defects produce curved trajectories during the annihilation. And we found that the far C director feed exerted torque on the defect system during the annihilation. And the new model fails to describe the experimental results. So now I will go to the second part, which is about the flow coupling of disclination and freely spanning fin. I showed you before that the classical models predict that both defects should move with the same velocity. So here V plus is for the plus defect, the V minus is the minus one defect. So here the model neglects the, neglects the material flow and consider one elastic constant. But I showed you that during our experimental results, we found that the positive defects always move faster than the negative one, which is in disagreement with the classical model. So a numerical simulation showed that the backflow and the elasticity play an important role. So the backflow is the coupling between the director field and the velocity field that induce a hydrodynamic motion. And it, have, it was shown that the positive, the backflow affects the defects based on their uh, topological charge. So it affects the positive defects, but do not affect the negative defects. As you can see it here, this is a plus one, this is a minus one, and this is a flow field around the defects while they move to the annihilation point. You can see they, there is vortices around the positive defect, but no vortices around the minus defect. So how to check the numerical predictions? So the idea here is based on the photo bleaching technique where the smectic material is mixed with photo um, uh, an eye red dye, which is fluorescent dye. And here I the freely spanning film is observed by means of confocal microscope. And they show you this spot here, which is bleached spot using a laser. So here you can see time. And here I show the intensity of this region of interest over time, this bleached region. So you can see it recover after about 10 seconds. So if we now take the fluorescence of the freely spanning film where the plus and minus one defect are present, you can notice that this is a plus one, this is a minus one. And the idea consists of bleaching spots around the defects and tra while tracking their position, we can determine the hydrodynamic flow around the defects. So we have done this for the case of plus one defect. This is the minus, this is the plus. The red line here is the trajectory of the plus one defect. The blue is for the minus one. This is the meeting point. And this is the region of interest, the bleached region here. So the arrow here presents the trajectory of the region of interest during the annihilation. You can see that the motion of the plus one defect is accompanied by a flow movement in the same direction. For the case of minus one defect, we have done the same. This is a bleached region here, the minus one, the plus one. So the annihilation is not complete because we just record 10 seconds before this region of interest vanish. So you can see that during those 10 seconds, the region of interest do not follow the motion of the minus one defect to the annihilation point. So I have combined different experiments from different pairs to construct an experimental map. This is the plus one, and this is the minus one. And those arrows here are 
bleached region around the plus one defect and around the minus one defect. So you can see that the backflow uh, feature is confirmed because there is systematic flow motion around the, the plus one defect, but there is no flow around the minus one. So if we now compare this experimental flow map to the numerical one, you can see that the experimental results aren't consistent with the numerical study. So now I move to the last part, which is about the dynamics of island in freely floating bubbles. So I told you that islands are surrounded by dislocations. So islands, as you can see it here, and by this side cut are thicker region than the background field. And the dislocations are formed around it, and they show here by the red dot. So we are interested on in the dynamics of islands in the presence of the dislocation and the special geometry of smectic membranes, which is freely floating bubbles. So how can we describe the island dynamics? But first, let's understand how we make the smectic bubbles. So the liquid crystal material, smectic material is introduced between two metallic rings. The bottom ring is fixed and we pull up the top one and there is a catenoid film that's formed in between. And at the critical distance, the catenoid is broke and we have the bubble formed in between the two metallic rings and it will oscillate to reach the spherical shape. So here I show you a quick video of this process. This is bottom ring, the top ring, and the catenoid film is formed here, as you can see, and it will break at some distance. Yeah, so you can see the bubble is tiny bubble formed in between here, and there is two film, smectic film remain on the catenoid, as you can see it here. So between the pinch off, which is the catenoid break into the spherical shape, the bubble will oscillate and it will oscillate too fast. That's why we need a high speed camera to, to observe those oscillations. So here I show you a movie from the high speed camera showing the oscillation of the bubble after the pinch off until the spherical shape. So, during the oscillation, smectic island will grow, will recreate and grow into the bubble rich, the spherical shape. And you can see that the bubble also oscillates through complex shapes. So why do the islands grow? After pinch off and during the oscillation regime, there is a surface reduction with a constant volume of material which means an increase in the thickness. This is done by material redistribution, which is done by building and growth of islands. So the islands, as I said, are thicker than the background film, and they are surrounded by dislocation, and they grow as long as the material inflow exists. And their surface area is predicted to grow quadratically over time. So here, again, we are interested in studying the dynamic of island during the oscillation regime. So as I said, the surface area of the island is predicted to grow quadratically over time. So we found that 25 islands out of 80 show strange <clears throat> behavior during, <clears throat> excuse me. We found that <clears throat> 25 islands out of 80 show a strange <clears throat> behavior during growth. So they start to grow quadratically, their surface area start to grow quadratically over time. Then suddenly there is drop, as you can see here, and they start to grow back again. So here it's the end of the oscillation. This case can happen twice. This phenomenon can happen twice. This example here, they start to grow quadratically. There is a first drop recover back for a second drop, and then it recovers back to the previous growth rate, quadratic growth rate. <clears throat> so we look through the islands to understand where this drop came from. 
And we found that during this drop, the island form wrinkles, as you can see it here, where this mectic material is drawn in the three-dimensional space in this way, like undulation. So this is not the first time that undulation are observed in smectic material. It has been shown that linear undulation are formed in bubbles. But here we have circular undulation. And we observe undulation in the island with the absence of wrinkle and undulation outside the island. So here there are wrinkles specific to the island. So if we define a few parameters like the amplitude of the wrinkles and the wavelength, so here I can measure the wavelength specific to the wrinkles. So I plot here the profile across the island on this red line here. So I can measure a wavelength of 40 micrometer, and over time, there is a reduction of about 15%. So this plot here is the radial coordinate over time. So I take radial coordinate across this red line and I plot it over time to show that the wavelength is quasi-constant as those bright and dark lines remain parallel, more or less. And I also find that the wrinkles are formed inside first, then new waves, new wrinkles are formed from the outside, as you can see it here. So what is the reason behind the formation of those wrinkles on the island? Why they just don't grow normal? We attributed those to external perturbance. The first source of uh, external perturbance is airflow surrounding the bubble. I showed you that there is two remaining film on the catenoid ring. So those two remaining fins will oscillate and will generate an airflow that will compress the bubble locally, which can compress the island and generate wrinkles. And the second type of external disturbance is the bubble complex shape. I showed you that the bubble will oscillate from the elongated shape to the spherical one across complex shape. So here, I show you one example, and I, with this arrow, I want to show you this island. So this island is presenting wrinkles, and you can see it's in a complex shape. And you can even see that here there are wrinkles formed outside the island on this area here, which is due to the complex shape of the bubble. So what mechanism induce the wrinkles? It has been shown that it has been one one dimensional model was built to describe the wrinkles in the bubble, where the film area was considered to be compressed by external opposing force Fs here. So how to model the wrinkle located in the circular island? So again, the island present wrinkles with the amplitude A and the wavelength lambda. So we define the wave number Q equal to two pi over lambda. So we identify the first compressive force, Fs again here, that performs a mechanical work given by this equation. And the bending force of the smectic material, Fb, that performs a mechanical work here, where Ks is the elastic constant and H is the fin thickness. So the airflow between the undulations that perform force and the mechanical work given by this equation where C is a constant and A point is the amplitude growth rate. The last force, which is due to the line tension due to the presence of the dislocation around the island, the force FD, which perform a mechanical work given by this equation where gamma is a line tension. So there's two force favor the undulation, while those two one do not favor the undulations. And the combination or the balance between the forces, we can get a dispersion relation of the amplitude growth rate, A point, uh, the following. And you can see this term here 
which is so important because it contained the line tension due to the presence of the dislocation around the island. So RC is the typical island radius. So from this dispersion relation, we can have a selected wavelength, lambda, with the fastest growing, mo growing mode, uh, the following, and the growth rate S max as the following. So from this equation, you can note, note that for small compressive force that do not re induce wrinkle in the bubble due to the presence of the second term due to the line tension or the dislocation around the island, we can have wrinkles in the island and not on the bubble around. So here, I want to show you the effect of island size. I consider this area from the bubble that has actual contraction about 50% and homogeneous compressive force because the islands are close to each other. And we have comparable island thickness because they have similar contrast. So if we take the first small, medium-sized island shown by the yellow square, this island has radius of 65 micron and it form wrinkles. You can see it visible here and even here at 30 milliseconds. So the wavelength of the wrinkles is about 23 micron. So as this island presents wrinkles, this means that this term is important. If we take now the island shown in the blue square, this island has a radius of about 102 micron, but do not generate wrinkles. This means that this term is small and also because this radius is larger. So you can see that here, this term became smaller than the previous one. That's why we don't see wrinkles here. And even the growth rate S max is smaller because it's RC also the line tensions divided by RC, which became larger here. If we take the last example of the small island shown by the, yellow, the, by the red square, this island has a radius of 49. So this term became larger and the wavelength would be smaller, which would be here about between 20 and 23, but the island do not generate wrinkles, but it bulges out of the plane. So this is because the wavelength of the undulation is of the order of the radius. So the island cannot accommodate the wrinkles. So it bulge out of the plane. To sum up, we have found that symmetric island are, they have, they have specific wrinkles and novel, with novel pattern and that we call the circular wrinkle with a selected wavelength. And those wrinkles are formed because of an abrupt stress applied on the island and the undulation have large amplitude that we can observe by microscope comparing to their thickness, which is of the order of few nanometers. So the circular wrinkles are modulated and to, in order to describe the mechanism of their formation, we have shown that the line tension surrounding the dislocation has an important role in the selection of the wavelength and the island size play an important role also in their formation. And finally, I want to thank you for your kind attention. And I want to thank people that I worked with in Magdeburg in Germany and ENSP in Paris and Nova Spass in Kness. Thank you. Okay. Um, uh, can people hear me? I've unmuted. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Good. Okay. Good. Um, yeah. Uh, thank you, Amin. Uh, very nice talk, yeah. and I like the video of you bouncing around the airplane. <laughs> um, yeah. uh, so right now we will open this up. This is um, plenty early. Open this up to questions. Um, so if you have a question, see, there's a hand raise. I don't know how to do this. Um, Shule, why don't you take over moderating the questions? I'm not quite sure how to do this. Yeah, you can, uh, if you wanna ask a question, you can go to the reactions and uh, there's a raise hand button. Okay, we have, um, 
from Alina. If we imagine that case, Harsh. Where... I think Harsh raised the hand. Okay, Harsh. Uh, sure. So uh, I just wanted to say that was a nice talk and a very striking result about the about the plus one uh, so asymmetry between the two uh, between the two defects. I was wondering, is there any understanding of that beyond just the simula numerical simulation, or or is that it? Uh, excuse me. Can we, can you repeat the question again? Yeah, I was asking about the asymmetry between the plus one and the minus one sign defect. In, in and you said that you have numerical simulations that show that asymmetry also due to backflow. So, yes, uh, the, the numerical simulation. Right. Yeah. Uh, this so, part, yeah. Yes. But there's no understanding of that beyond the numerical simulations? or. So this is a numerical simulation that consider that first the one elastic uh, approximation where the K1 equal to K3 or S play equal to band but it considers only the backflow. But it has been shown in different other uh, work that even the elastic, uh, even the elastic anisotropy can have similar effects, but weaker than the backflow. Okay. Do All I right. reply to your question? Uh, yes, thank you. You're right. okay, there's another question uh, in the chat by uh, Olena. So if we imagine that the K33 uh, is much smaller than K11, would the plus uh, defects move faster than the minus one? And how the ratio of uh, uh, K33 uh, for, uh, to uh, K11 would enter the model? Okay, so let me just show you again the configuration of the plus one defect. Okay, let's look here. So this plus one defect is pure bend because it's tangential configuration. So even if the K11, what I call here KS is equal, is, is bigger than KB, this will be pure bend. This will not affect the, the plus one defect, but will affect the minus one defect because this configuration here contains both play and bend configuration. So this will not be affected by the elastic anisotropy. Okay. So any other questions? I have a question. Yes. Um, <clears throat> so with the, <clears throat> pardon me, with the islands. Okay. Um, I'm curious how the thickness um, of the islands come in, comes into play. And in particular, since you're dealing with smectic, does anything pathological occur as you go down to, um, let's say, H equals two? So you can imagine a one layer, <clears throat> a one layer bubble. Um, you're not going to be able to create it, but you might be able to create a two layer bubble. Mm -hmm. And does anything pathological occur as you have islands that are down to maybe three layers as opposed to it wasn't clear from what you did how thick your actual islands okay how thick the actual islands are so the islands that i studied are about between 20 to 15 nanometers thickness and okay. the thickness will affect the growth uh, rate so i just let me see if i have Okay, so this is a good example. So here I show the growth rate of three islands with different thickness. So this island here is thinner, and this is medium, this is thicker. So one, two, three. And you can see they grow with the growth, they grow with quadratic growth rate, but with different rates. Okay. So thinner islands will tend to grow faster than thinner one, uh, than thicker one, sorry. Uh, okay, understood. But is there anything pathological that occurs when you get to very, very thin islands where you're, because you basically have quantized layers here, or it's just a nice, you know, that, that, um, that functional form works all the way down to the thinnest islands. Um, what might you expect as opposed yeah, to- I think that, because it, it's it's really fast, so I think we there will be no effect because it's about hundred milliseconds. So if there is like a convection effect or 
a flow around the island caused by the ins in material and after will not be crucial on the island growth. I never tried to have, because it's too hard to make <coughs> bubbles. So I don't know exactly what, what should happen, but I don't think that will be uh, a huge difference in between. Okay. So here, uh, as I said, I have islands uh, for about 20, 20 nanometers and the layer uh, thickness of this material is about 2.9. So I have few layers here and you have, you can consider that the bubble is twice thinner than the island. So we have like bubbles of about 10, 10 nanometers, which is about three layers. So the bubble is three layers and the island are about six to seven layers. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. I have a question, I mean, um, yes. thanks for the nice talk first. Mm -hmm. um, so you discussed that the, um, the curve, the trajectory of a pair of uh, uh, defects. Uh, I'm wondering whether that has, uh, uh, no, physically, that has something to do with the magnetic force, which in really a transverse force we have uh, when you have a spinning object. So, okay. Okay, here. Yeah. Okay, so just to mention that um, this plus and minus one defect is exactly analog to the spin in the magnetic uh, uh, system. They are exactly, can be described by the same equations with the same dynamic. And I know that in spin, they also have curved trajectories. So they are analog to each other. So they could be um, described by the same force, especially, if when I showed this square root here, discrepancy where we deviate from the classical model. And when we consider that the separation distance, when we measure it along the path, we find again the square root of time low. This suggests that maybe the force, the way that the force, the drag force and the elastic force, the way that they are pointing with respect to each others also change with the defect position and orientation. That's why maybe during this annihilation here, we have to consider this separation distance along this path, which is similar to the spin in, uh, in the magnetic uh, magnetism because the force would depend always on the orientation of the, uh, the defect. Okay, thanks. All right. Other questions from the audience? Okay. Um, I'll point out uh, with other, without any other questions right now that uh, Amin is here every day and he hides in room 120 in Rockefeller. So stop by and uh, feel free to discuss more of this with him if you wish. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank okay. you. Okay. Okay. Let me stop the recording. <laughs>